Hey, welcome back to uh, Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. I am Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And today we're going to talk about this article that came out tomorrow. Housing crash soon. Do not buy warning. It's a kind of an interesting article. We're going to talk about where the housing market stands currently and whether or not this makes sense. Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. Yeah. Uh-oh. Fire. J- J Powell. J Powell is going to burn it down, baby. He's been trying, been working hard. Is he going to succeed? That's the real question here, my man. Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to okay. go back to where it was. All right. I got gotcha. you. So I thought this was kind of an interesting article here for a reason I'm going to mention in a second. But, uh, you know, house prices are still very high. So hold off buying for at least six months is basically what this guy is saying. And, you know, here's his name, Robert Schiller. Does that make any sense to you or ring any bells? No. No. All right. Uh, you ever heard of the Case Schiller U.S. National Housing Price Index? Yes. Okay, That's yes. Schiller. Got it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> so, I mean, it's hard to argue that say that this guy isn't at least somewhat of authority on this because he literally, his name is on the index that tracks housing prices in the U.S. So, kind of an authoritative source, right? You, you could argue he has a little bit of experience. Yeah, you know, a little bit, a little bit of clout. So basically, the, the, this is the actual overall housing market uh, kind of pricing structure or reflecting of the housing prices in the U.S. And uh, as you can see here, we've had started to have a little bit of a dip just recently, but still significantly elevated to where we were, you know, even in the last like kind of housing bubble-ish period. I know it's not the same thing; it's different dynamics. You're not seeing any of these liar loans or any of this crazy stuff that went back in 08. But still very much elevated compared to where it was historically. Okay. Yeah. Is he saying hold off in six months before buying a home? Was that the statement? Yeah. He's saying hold off at least six months before you buy a house. That's, the interest rates are still so high. I just, it's terrifying. I, I saw this thing where it was if you bought a 600K house at like 2.5% or 2%, it was the same as a $392,000 house right now. Yeah, um, I, actually, I, re- I ran through my own example of that here at the end of this video. Oh, cool. I uh, compared it to the, the U.S. median income as well. Uh, so get ready for that that one right there. But, you know, we still have pretty historic, you know, lows as far as supply in the market. So it's still been buoyed these prices a little bit. But but that can only kind of last for a certain period of time. Because right now, sellers are just kind of going like, eh, I can't move anywhere myself. So what the hell am I going to pull my own house in the market for? Exactly. So I got to have to go out and take a loan. So this chart actually here, I, I got to give these guys credit. This was actually a pretty cool chart looking at what portion of the population in all these various states can actually afford a home, basically, uh, following conventional financial advice. Right? So the whole kind of coastal picture here is, is pretty horrible in terms of affordability. So these like, blue like, kind of circles you see over each state, that's telling you what percent of the population has enough of a household income to afford a home in that state. So some of these are ridiculous. Look. Vermont is like worse. It was like 16% of people in Vermont can actually afford a home. Do we know the definition of afford? Yeah, yeah so that's, that's a good question. When you're looking at, you're thinking about from like, a, like a debt to income ratio, that sort of thing. There's a lot of guidelines or rules, if you will, where they don't want to see a debt to income ratio usually above like 40, 45%. Now that's just all debt. So that includes, you know, things like car loans, and student loans, not just mortgage. You know, when you're looking at mortgage, you usually want to say 28 to 35 percent is kind of like the maximum you want to go. Right? So that's what this, they're kind of basing these numbers on. I just I'm so confused as to how Wyoming is 23 percent. I like I my cousins live there, so like I go there. It sucks. It's so yeah. cold. Like I don't <laughs> what. You know, they, they did kind of talk a little bit in the article that was associated with this a little bit about the, the rural versus like a kind of metro disparity. And that was Wyoming's one they talked about specifically. Uh, the incomes are just so much lower in the rural parts of the, the state. OK, that's why. So, it you know, when you're looking at this, even like, you know, to, to carve up a whole country like this by states is still kind of like a very blunt tool that if you really want to do this on like a more kind of unit level and want to go down this like zip code, say, probably a better metric to be using than it is on a state basis or even the national numbers, which a lot of the kind of housing stuff is talking about national numbers, right? Yeah. So like I'm in Arizona, the, in the big Phoenix area, Phoenix is a capital, but really there's like eight cities that bled into each other. It's almost twice as much as if you drive 50 miles and like to the East where, you know, you still get water trucked in outside of like in Maricopa (laughs) County. It's the houses are literally half the price. Yeah. And, you know, but you, you know, 
you're far from everything. Yeah, you'll be putting 10 hours a week in your car and uh, then you got to price that into your life. So, you know, this is a, a graph representing the actual home price to income ratios. So it's designed to replicate, you know, grow with earnings, if you will, and show how much more stretched the, the average household is when they're trying to buy a home. And this goes back to 2012. And you look at the, this, you know, kind of generic kind of upward sloping line here, right? But all of a sudden we departed significantly from it. And we've barely started to come back towards it at this point. So Scary. this is, that's 140% of house price to income ratio? Exactly. So yep. I got to do a shout out. Someone, we did a housing video a while ago and they said, look at Canada when I said that ours was bad. Because yeah. I, I think ours like overall was a four to one if you look at salary. Uh -huh. Theirs was like 116. So that's not great. So yeah. at least it could be worse is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, there are metro areas in China that are like 50, 60 uh, to one as far as like a home price to you know income ratio, just absolute insanity. Yeah. Uh, but when you're looking at a more broad spectrum of the country, it's a little bit different. You know, and we, we are starting to obviously continue the same trend here where we're seeing it's really coastal places that got really uh, out of whack as far as like the being so expensive compared to income. Um, so I actually wanted to propose something to you, Dylan. What, what do you think about us both moving to Mississippi? Zero, zero percent chance. Zero. Come on. Could Mississippi? Be like Mississippi millionaires. I, I would rather move to, to Texas. Have you seen? Okay, the property tax sucks. <laughs> but have you seen the size of the house you can get? In Texas, yes, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty solid. I, so it's always funny because, like you know, um, it, you know, comparatively, I could get a, a cheaper home in Texas that would be much nicer than my, my home in Massachusetts right now. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the property tax sucks, but I mean, yeah. the homes you could lose so much time just looking on on a uh, Zillow and text be like, man, I could have this. Yeah, I got I gotta look at it because uh, so Massachusetts, my property taxes in my house are over five thousand dollars a year. <laughs> Oh, actually, that might be similar to Texas. Actually, that might be worse. Actually, that might be worse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to believe it's not. So 30-year uh, mortgage rates, you know, we, we did it actually peak up at 7% at one point. It's come back down. You're looking at 6.3% right now as far as what, according to um, it's, it's Mortgage News Daily or something like that. That's the one I usually use because they update there so quickly. You can really kind of keep track of it there. But I ran some numbers. All right. This is what I was talking about. So Q4. Median home sales price, 2022, was $467,700, right? Okay. Median household income for the most recent year I could get, 2021, was just under 71000 right? So at 3%, that median home price would have been 31% of their, their gross monthly income. Okay. Right? That's within the, the realm where you're going to get it approved even if you have like a car loan and maybe even a little yes. bit of student loan debt, right? You have a little bit of a buffer there. If you're looking at that same exact house... Believe it or not, the the kind of decrease in prices here went from like 467, uh, 468 to 467 to 467.7. That's literally how much it's moved so far in terms of the median home sale in the U.S. Oh, Barely at all. Okay, yeah. but the in, but the okay, that's not good. But the interest rate, six point three percent now. That's as of today when we're filming this, which is uh, April eighth. Two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars would be a monthly payment on that. That's it, not including property tax uh, or homeowners insurance, right? So it's fifty percent more. 46% yeah. of the, the actual gross monthly income for the for a typical American household. It's, it's well above what would be approved. It's literally 50% more because yeah. 918 divided by 2 is 9. 9 times 3 is 20. So that's rough. That's that, not good. That sucks. Rough. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's tough because, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, People want to own homes, and you know this is really going to keep them locked out of the market unless we have a significant revaluation. Yeah, that's, I don't know. It's going to be a while. I mean, I I, I kind of hope there was because I I wanted it would be nice to to diversify investments out of stocks and have like another house. But the problem is the the interest rate really just kills that. People who who and I'm one of them, so I'm I'm fortunate enough. But people who got to refinance or lock down a rate that was like two point five. It's like highway robbery. Like people are complaining right now that it's six. Just to be clear, our parents paid like fifteen. Now it's not uh, it's not equivalent because the house yeah. didn't cost that much, but it's still pretty outrageous. It's crazy. It is. It is. So the real question is, how do you guys think this thing will break? How will it end? Will Fed 
blink and lower interest rates finally, or will housing prices come down significantly over the next six months to a year? Nah, we're fucked. Thanks, guys. Thanks.